today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and joining me today is Nikki Hendry. How are you, Nikki? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. Have a good weekend. I did. Yeah. You know what? I think it's just like the busiest time of the, you know, the year for a lot of people. I like cleaned my house, like did some Christmas shopping. My Christmas tree is still not decorated, but you know, it's getting to be Christmas time and I'm excited to go back home for the holidays. Oh, I love like November, December when just like you relax. Yeah. Barely have to work anymore. I don't know about you, but I <laughs> <laughs> come in here and grind, so I don't know what you're doing in the field, Charlie. Did you, you got the wrong job, Nikki. <laughs> okay, what do we got today? Billie Eilish, she had an interesting weekend. She slammed Variety magazine for outing her as LGBTQ+. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Kristen Cavallari went on her podcast and said something that I think a lot of guys will agree with. Uh, women shouldn't wait to sleep with a guy that they like. They should just do it whenever. Well, I agree with her. Oh. So I can't wait to get to that one. <laughs> Me too. Me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough. <laughs> but to begin with, Britney Spears. It appears that she has reconciled with some of her family. This after bashing them in her book and online, she's been bashing them all. Yeah. But she celebrated her 42nd birthday over the weekend and her mum and brother came over and hung out with her. Well, I I will say this. She's she's talked to her brother. She talks to her brother. She he was one of the ones that she still kept in touch with, but the mom, the dad and and the sister not at all. So, I mean, a mom coming to your 42nd birthday is huge. Yeah. It's huge, especially how tumultuous their relationship has been and like you said, trashing her in the book and all of the things. So, this is amazing. This is all this is I, I love this. I love this. Me me too because she needed someone, you know, after the Sam Asghari stuff went down and all that conservative sh stuff just gave her trust issues with, yeah. with anyone close to her. Yeah. And so she's kind of been a bit isolated and alone lately, yeah. but to have her mum and brother come over and they didn't just come over, the mum, Lynn, stayed the night. Yeah. There's all these photos of them like Brittany lying on her chest on the couch like a kid might do to their parent right. and... um. Britney actually lifts up her Lynn in a picture and holds her like cute. it cradles her like a baby sort of yeah. thing. Um, it is really cute to see an affection between Britney and someone who like really cares about her. I think exactly what you said is like, um, just like any mom, you know, coming to the aid of your child, whether, you know, you're on good or bad terms with them when they need you the most says a lot about Lynn. Yeah. I know that they, this family especially has been through a lot. Britney has been through a lot, but even as a mother, as Lynn watching your daughter go through all this stuff and having that, that type of like, you know, not good relationship with them. She came to her birthday and they were like, I guess sources are saying they were like two peas in a pod and never skipped a beat. And I think that that speaks volumes of the love they might have for each other deep down once you get past all of that anger. That is great because a parent should have unconditional love for their child. They do. Child. I mean, that yes, they, they should and they, and, and it cl clearly Lynn does yeah. because, I mean, it was only like a month or two ago that she was saying, Lynn, my, you know, mom, you threw out all my dolls. You threw out all my journals, like accusing her publicly of doing stuff. Yeah. And Lynn was like, uh, no, I didn't. They're right over here if you want to come get them. Yeah. Um, but so Lynn just like, it doesn't matter what beef Britney has. She probably gets Britney in a way that none of us do and, and has greater empathy and a mother's love, you know? Yeah. And I think people in her circle as well, you know, the, the uh, Instagram stories that were shared by, you know, Brittany's hairstylist said, you know, I'm so happy that your mama and you are together at last. Like here's to healing and a life of happiness and bonds that will never be broken. And I think that that hits it right on the head of like, it's just good. It just feels like, I, I feel happy for Brittany that yeah. she was so happy in those photos, being with her mom, like. I think at right now, I mean, you know, when you're sad and stuff, you just want like a mom's hug. Totally. It's like the best thing ever. And so, yeah. I know. That's really cute. I mean, I like this version of Britney. I know. More we than already I like. know. Every time I'm on the podcast, you're just sitting here calling her like crazy. Well, I mean, it, I'm within my rights. Like, no. Did you see that she posted more videos like yesterday of her rolling around naked in a bed? So like, what does that even matter though? Because you have OnlyFans girls doing the exact same thing. I just... It's just because you don't like Britney. It's okay to say that you don't like... She's not your cup of tea. She's not my cup of tea. There you go. Okay. All right, squash it. I feel like... Don't I ever call her crazy ever again. Oh, I mean, I mean, she... I, I have sympathy for her. I just feel like she... 
She d- acts not in her own best interests a lot of the time. And that is why she's got her mom here to help her. And her brother, like, I was reading into her brother, Brian, right. as well. Mm-hmm. He has, I mean, Brittany says they've all lived off me their whole lives. And I think that is true when you look at Jamie, the dad, Lynn, the mom, and Brian, and also Jamie, Lynn, the sister. Um, Brian, for years, was like her manager. Apparently, he was like co-manager even of the conservatorship back in the day but he's been on tour with her he's been in vegas with her everywhere britney's been brian's been there trying to make a buck off her and so i understand her like feelings like i'm not just a business i'm your sister but if if they can like let all that thing pass and hopefully now be somewhat of a family i mean that'd be great I will say there's two sides to every story, right? There's, you know, so the the parents and the family have one side. Brittany has her own side of the truth of what whatever it is that they feel their truth is. I feel like it's unfair to say that Jamie lived off of her. Jamie Spears. Uh, yeah, Jamie, the, the, the No, the daughter. Sorry, Jamie Lynn. It's so confusing she, with all these similar I names. I know, because she, Jamie Lynn has her own career in her own right. It may not have been as big as Brittany's, but she was still an actress. But she, she only got that because she was Brittany's sister. But that's okay. But she didn't say, like, Brittany needs to be in every movie that I'm in, so I'm riding her coattails kind of thing. She right. kind of was doing her own thing but I will say everyone has their own version of the events that happened and what they feel like they were doing for her you know like Brian being at her side all the time trying to make sure that she was maybe in his eyes he was trying to make sure she was safe Mm. and in her eyes she's like you're taking me for all my money right very true where's the dad in all this where is Jamie oh I don't know he he will he's one person I don't think will ever be welcome back I don't think so ever Billie Eilish is calling out Variety magazine for outing her on the red carpet. So this is an interesting story. Um, An interviewer on the Variety red carpet, who is LGBTQ, uh, asked Billy about a story that Variety had done on Billy and a bunch of other powerful women. Um, And the interviewer asked, did you mean to come out? Let's listen to some of that interview now. We got to talk about your cover story because you mentioned that you felt like for a long time women didn't like you. And when that came out, all the women were like, no, we love her. I'm still scared of them, but I think they're pretty. (laughs) Billy, did you mean mean to come out in the story? Girl, (laughs) no, I didn't. But I kind of thought, wasn't it obvious? Like, it's kind of been... I just, I didn't realize people didn't know. So So clearly Billy wasn't happy with being put on the spot. Um, She probably didn't mean to say things in the interview article a little while back. But I mean, she did say things that are interesting. She said, um, I'm attracted to women. I'm attracted to them as people. I'm attracted to them for real physically, but also I'm intimidated by them and their beauty and their presence. So that was enough in the article for this interviewer then, her name is Tiana Denicola, to want to follow up and and sort of clarify and kind of put a label on things. And Billy wasn't that happy with that. Well, the the thing is, is that it was Variety's magazine interview cover, like a uh, feature on mm-hmm. Billie Eilish. Yeah. The, the girl named Tiana was Variety's contributor on the red carpet. Yeah. So when you, as a, I'm going to ask you this question because you do this often on, in the field. When we put up a story that is very vague in details, right? Like if Billie Eilish, if you saw Billie Eilish and she said, I'm attracted to girls, I'm attracted to them for real, blah, 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 but didn't actually come out in this article and Harvey said, hey, Billie Eilish is going to be at the airport. What would you say to her? I, I, I wouldn't put it that plainly. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't, would it, hey, did you mean to come out? I just think that's such like a triggering type concept. The execution was poor. Yes, because if someone didn't intend to do that or uh, Billy is just uncomfortable having the conversation, which I totally get. Like she's also really young and she probably is figuring things out herself. And so she, I understand, I, I would probably, yeah, maybe ask about it in a roundabouts way. Okay. So go ahead. I'm Billie Eilish. Um, I mean, what has been the response? Um, since you told Variety magazine that you are attracted to women. Yeah, the response has been like really crazy. I like didn't think that the my like one thing that I said about women would like go blow up. <laughs> this is such a weird role play. Why? Billy Eilish not wanting to talk about her sexuality. <laughs> I'm LAX. serious though, because here's what you didn't do. You're going to come in here with that clip of what I just said and Harvey's going to tell you why didn't you ask her this? You can't ask someone plainly, A, are you gay? Or B, 
Did you mean to say you're gay back then? You can't like I put someone think... on the spot like that. I think it's such a, a tricky, sensitive topic that it's and up it to is. them to put a label on themselves. And it is. But, you know, Billy allegedly didn't intend to come out as LGBTQ. You know, that's that's what we said. We did, She didn't intend to come out. And it's calling out Variety for putting her on the spot. Yeah. So when you, when you have someone who says stuff like this in uh, an, an article... Like, right? We have people who tell us things all the time. Yeah. Then you have them also. She is a very big ally for the LBGTQ community. Right. But, like, how is she? For, for me, there was a bunch of criticism against the reporter Tiana. And I think it's oh. wrong. I, I, I think, think it's wrong to criticize the reporter, too. Because the reporter also is. I mean, she's married to a woman, the reporter. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's, it, it's, it's easier for someone like that in that community to ask Billy, so, hey. Did you mean to say you're a member of the community I'm a member of? I think her execution was poor, but I think she was doing her job. Me too. But it's called bedroom police. Like, I don't ever want to be bedroom police. I I don't think. Like, especially if someone feels uncomfortable about it or that sort of stuff. I think some things are a little bit gross to, like, come right out and say. No, Um, I know. But, yeah, having said that, I understand why the journalist did this. I think it it was totally fine reporting. I'm just talking about from my own standpoint. Um how I would go about getting that story, getting that headline. But But you also are on a red carpet where she's got to, you got one question with her and then she's got to go. So, I I mean, to be honest, Tiana's execution and maybe the way that she asked the question was poor, but I think that she was doing her job. And I think as a reporter for the interview, for the magazine that she did the interview with initially, that interview already came out. Billy already said the stuff that she was going to say. Right. Tiana's just following up and doing her job. I I, I think so too. I, I, I agree. Um, and Billy has, like, over the years said different stuff that make people ask questions. And it's, it's just a sad – it's one of the facts of being a celebrity that people are interested in every facet of you. And yep. so if you're going to be like – Billie Eilish is an A-list star. If she drops hints – I mean, hints makes it seem like she wants us to know. But if she says things just in conversation and then people's ears perk up like, huh, she said that, she said that, and you put dots together, does it mean this? Like, she doesn't – Billy didn't mean for it to get to this point where she goes, hi, everyone, I'm this. Right. She just wanted to, she's just speaking her life and speaking her truth. But yeah, you're an A-list celebrity. People are going to ask questions. People are going to write headlines. Yeah, I don't know. And I think it's like just the culture we're living in now where the LBGTQ community has become such a um, more normalized thing than when our parents were, you know, yeah. when we were growing up. So I think that like, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah. Billy, live live your best life, live your truth, like do what you need to do. Not and and I agree with you. We're, it's bedroom police. Not everyone needs to know what you're doing and who you like and who you're dating or whatever. And if you want us to know, you're gonna come out with some sort of Instagram launch or photos on a magazine like Kendall and Bad Bunny did when they confirmed they were dating. So but some people don't even want to sort of confirm it for and us. That's they just okay. want to be like because Billy actually posted over the weekend referring to this red carpet interview. And she posted a series of slides and she said Thanks, Variety, for my award and for also outing me on a red carpet at 11 a.m. instead of talking about anything else that matters. I like boys and girls. Leave me alone about it, please. Literally, who cares? A lot of people care. A lot of people care. I mean, that's just the thing. A lot of people care. But I don't still think it's right that you go, give us an answer, Billy. That is true. But also, we love Billy and... People are interested in what she's up to, and that's just the nature of being a celebrity. That is true. It comes with the territory, like we always say, right? It does. Okay, on to our final story. Which is a little more fun than our previous one. (laughs) This is really fun. Oh, we're about to get real good. Really fun. (laughs) Kristen Cavallari said women shouldn't wait uh, before banging a dude if they like him. If if, if you want to bang him on the first night, do it. If you want to wait till the 10th night, do it. But it doesn't make a difference in the successfulness of your relationship. Uh, Let's listen to some of the sound now. How many dates till you sleep with a guy? I've been on this thing in the last like two years maybe of being like, you should make him wait like three or four dates. I don't think it fucking matters. It doesn't fucking matter if you sleep with him the first date or the 10th date. If there is chemistry and feelings there, it doesn't matter. I saw this relationship coach post 90% of couples who are in like the best relationships where they like found the one all slept together the first or second date. So I don't think it matters. What do you reckon? Well, I used to be the same. Like as a girl that and you grow up, that is like your most sacred thing, right? Yeah. Your, um, what is that? Virginity. Virgin. Oh my, 
No, <laughs> virginity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not the actual thing. <laughs> anyway, your virginity is like your most sacred thing, right? You're yeah. supposed to wait till marriage, like all the things in some families, you know, whatever. That's how I always thought of it. I'm like, oh, I can't. Like, oh, I really like him. And like, oh, things were like spicy. But like I had to stop him because like it was our first date or our second date together. But like as I got older and she's an older woman, mm -hmm. she has three kids. She's mm -hmm. already been married and gone through a divorce. In her shoes, I, it doesn't matter. But even it in doesn't your matter. even in your shoes when you were like twenty, and in my shoes when I was like twenty something, that's when Bumble and Tinder and all of the dating apps started to come out, which is like basically hookup culture. You know, right. everyone is on those apps just to get some. Sometimes some people are really actually looking for someone and a compatible partner, but more majority of the time, those are just hookup apps. Yes. I mean, and yes. so it does not matter. You're literally saying, hey, want to meet up for drinks? And you know you're going to sleep with them. Uh, but but I totally agree with Kristen that, like, if, if you met the love of your life, or if, you, if you met someone who had just great chemistry with, yeah. and you slept with them on the first night, I don't think that would make you not go on a second date with them if they were, like, the love of your life and you had great chemistry with them. If, if, if it was only about sex then it was only ever going to be about sex, no matter if you waited for the first date or the third date. Right, like it, right. I, I totally agree. I don't think it has a bearing on the successfulness of the future relationship. Either either you had chemistry but to begin with or you didn't. Yeah, but I feel like that's wrong. Because what do you mean? some people are super good in bed and then there are no emotion, no like no chemistry emotionally and to like deal with like life stuff when you are actually with someone compatible and that's your soulmate for life and all you guys have in common is that you have you're good in bed. But that's together. fun too. But yeah, but some people aren't looking for that and so they want to give people just play devil's advocate cuz since we agreed for once yeah. on something. <laughs> <laughs> um some some women like let's say I was a single woman in El Los Angeles and I wanted to find someone I wasn't going to sleep with someone because then that dictates whether if they're good in bed whether I'm going to see them again or if they're terrible in bed whether I'm going to see them but again. But shouldn't it dictate like but if you like you them? But shouldn't you give them an opportunity to show you share common interests like I like horseback riding so do you. I like to see I like other I like riding. It. Oh my god. See I walked right into that one. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, <laughs> but do you I, get I, what I, I'm I, saying? Think... Allowing the relationship a chance other than just being it based on sex. But I think the hypothetical guy you're talking about who is only about sex was never going to stay with you to begin with. You know what right, I mean? Right, but like, at least he can court me for one or two dates and I can get a free meal and like some drinks well, but that's out of different him. Then. That, that is a different and thing. And then I can give it up. But if it's only about trying to string this guy along for free food, then yeah, maybe well, you got I'm a point. I'm not saying just but, free but, food. But Kristen's but the point she's making what is, is she making? maybe like marriage. Do you, do you think the chances of people getting married is affected by if they sleep with each other on the first night or if they wait? No, I don't think it's affected whatsoever. Yes. I don't think it, I, I, I have had plenty of sort of successful relationships where maybe I've slept with them early or maybe it's been one night stands turned into a relationship or, or I've had like girls who I've had a not very long relationship with and we've waited two or three days. It just has no bearing. It's just, it's up to the different chemistry we have with different people. I don't I don't think sex either like make someone stay or make someone go. I think if you like someone and you want to have sex with them, just do it. But don't I like, oh, feel... I'm going to wait till the third date. But that... I like you, you like me, let's do it. That's how it used to be back in the day. Remember like when we would like hold hands with someone and like that, those those defined the stages of the relationship you were in, of what state you were in, like if you were just kissing, if you were making out, if you were hooking up, if you were doing other things. But I don't think that slow tiptoeing and then having sex on the fifth date, I don't think that helped have more successful relationships. I, it just, it is what it and is. And I just feel like dating nowadays, I've been out of it for a really long time, so have you, but like, it's a different ball game. A lot of sex going on? A lot of sex. Oh, wow. Okay, then. <laughs> thank you for joining me today, Nikki. Oh, thank you. And we'll see you guys here tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.